my my studio here at St. Elmo Village uh, in Los Angeles. And this is a space that I've occupied for the past three years. And it is the first large dedicated space that I've had to work in. Uh, it was a, um, uh, a garage, but I also think it, it already had the shelving in it, so it was used to facilitate um, a, a business owner uh, and was a perfect setting for me to do my work. I'm an assemblage artist and in its broadest terms, meaning that I use a whole variety of materials and mediums uh, to achieve predominantly sculptural pieces. And this is an example of one of them here. Um, but I have opened up that realm of assemblage to include things that you can't always see tangibly uh, which might include everything from light and sound uh, and the other genres of arts, including writing, poetry, performance, music, and to do a lot of collaboration. And uh, here at the village, it was a, a wonderful place to be for the past three years because it is a place born of that kind of concept and idea and philosophy of assemblage. Assemblage just basically means to assemble. And the village is this unique place that during the late 60s, uh, people gathered here and made it uh, an important uh, reality to be creative uh, despite uh, uh, challenges and issues and the way they were perceived as a group, they, they were dedicated to their creativity. And therefore this was a wonderful place for me to be. And I came to know of St. Elmo Village through a number of friends over the years. I've been in Los Angeles for 13 years and actually resided not far from here in the Fairfax district. But once I had to leave my last dwelling, it was uh, to me, if I was going to stay in Los Angeles, it, I needed to stay here at the village. And I was um, embraced to come and reside here and found the perfect setting uh, for my, you know, my stay here. And even if it is not necessarily going to be a long-term stay, um, being at the village is incredibly inspiring. It has tapped into the, the work that I've done throughout my years. Uh, and I've been an active working artist since the age of 15. Um, and I'm 53 now. So the way in which I I live and breathe has been this creative spirit. Uh, one of the pieces that was in that is currently in the gallery called Soul, a uh, Soul Shine, is a, a perfect example of some of the found materials off the streets of LA. And in that one, the first piece that I came across was a shoe sole and I was waiting for the big blue bus at Pico in Fairfax one day and I was sitting there standing there with the whole crowd of other people waiting for the bus to come and I looked down and in the gutter was a shoe sole and I was struck by the fact that it was the entire shoe sole not just a piece but the entire sole of the shoe was laying in the street and it dawned on me this phrase someone in LA lost their soul and I thought of course it has that double meaning of soul s-o-l-e and soul s-o-u-l that I thought was intriguing enough to want to pick up that soul but on a crowded street and in most uh, urban settings and and a setting where you're around people uh, 
they might find that a very strange thing to see someone do is pick up what they might perceive as just trash in the street. And But these things that we often discard and call trash have a deeper symbolic meaning. And in my mind's eye as an artist, those are the things I see. And my inspirations have been both uh, artists uh, that people might be familiar with and know, as well as those who don't even use the term to define themselves as artists. And it's a broad, broad spectrum. But I remember growing up in Philadelphia and uh, during the 60s and seeing the garbage trucks pick up trash down through the alleys. And each truck, these very, very large Mack trucks, were adorned on the front with whatever they found that struck their eye or fancy from the trash, everything from bicycle parts and old Christmas wreaths and, and parts of dolls. And they would adorn the very front of their grill. And there was almost a competition between the trucks of, of who would have the most interesting assemblage. And as a child, I then would make my choices. And so here was this medium that was not an art supply at all. It wasn't painting. It was not um, your traditional uh, medium. But it was a fascinating, very narrative uh, material to work with. I didn't intend. I took the typical route of traditional arts of time. But only until I had the major challenge of my eyes did I start a more three-dimensional approach to my work. And because I knew that my eyesight would continue to change, I decided I should use that could go with that change in my sight. And assemblage is that, because it's so varied that I can always use a new material to articulate. It's very tactile, I can feel it, but it's structurally present. And so I can have an encounter. The scale of it can be eye to eye. And so with whatever eyesight I have, I'm going to utilize it to be creative. And, and assemblage was beautiful. It was a part of bringing together all of those mediums that I've learned. Everything from glass blowing to performance to painting um, and to uh, ceramics. And so bringing all of those things together to make what is now my assemblage work. And the people who've inspired me are the ones who, both in and outside of the disciplines, live a creative life. That, that they do the work not because they're getting paid to do it, not because their work sells tremendously, but because they have a need to express. Here at the village is a perfect example of people living and breathing and practicing their art. And it's a place that hopefully can continue to grow and be more of that as time goes by. And I want it to be a little part of that. And so my presence here um, not only benefits me, but I feel it, it benefits the environment of what's being created here. And is certainly an un unexpected gem and creative oasis here in Los Angeles.